Hey there, uh, it's Taylor here again. Um, today we're going to be going into a little bit of sampling these drones and also combing through some drones. So I'm working from that last session that we were checking up on in the last video with metaphysical function. I still have the drone that I recorded into there. So first things first, I went and put in some violas using contact. Um, for the reason being is I usually make soundscapes with a lot of string textures in the background. I really like the way that sounds and maybe you will too. So I have viola here with a little bit of reverb. I have all that stuff I recorded in the last video. All right, so I have all that development, all that movement from all of this recording coming out of metaphysical function. And so now I can just loop this little section. And what I want to do is load up a corpus. So corpus is very similar to the resochord. Um, but it's a physical modeler. So you have all these different choices of physical models you can put this into. Beam, marimba, string, membrane, plate, pipe, and tube. All of them have different um, just noise structures and just different tonal qualities. And you also have different control over them as well. Uh, for this instance, we're going to use string. And this has a basic tune, so you can actually tune the pitch of this physical modeler. So we'll actually solo this drone for now. So it can be weird, but what we can do here is start to sidechain this to my contact. So I can actually use the MIDI from contact to tune this corpus. And one reason why I do this is because I have all this audio developing over maybe three minutes or my whole song and this sound is going to be running into corpus and constantly evolving with all my strings as well. So I'm not limited just to a sample and it's not going to re-trigger every single time I play a new note. It's actually going to be developing and moving the whole time so it'll actually create a different type of uh, atmosphere and I I like that a lot so that's something I do a lot. Um, so what I need to do now is sidechain MIDI so you get MIDI from and I want to get it from contact 5 and then I want to assign a frequency. So Corpus is kind of polyphonic but it will tend to lock on to uh, one pitch as opposed to playing a chord sometimes you can hear chords come out of it but for the most part it's monophonic so you have two options here you can trigger from your last note or your lowest note and lowest note is for more chord type structure um, MIDI notes so I want to sign my off decay as well So 100% off decay will mean once my MIDI note ends, so will the sound. There will be no decay, even though I have decay set in here. So that is one thing to note, that your off decay will bring a little bit more control into your sound. And so in order for this guy to trigger, I actually need to have the MIDI be actively running into it. So I can't just be soloed on the drone with this contact uh, not soloed as well. That's why I usually, after I just try out a bunch of different instruments I want to sync the pitch to, I will go and create a new MIDI track just for the drone 
and option drag that MIDI onto that track. Rename this as Drone MIDI. And then I can just go in here and assign my MIDI from, from Drum MIDI. So it makes things a little bit more easier. And I can actually change up the counterpoint as well. And so when I solo this now, I can solo it with the Drone MIDI track. And it, I won't have to listen to that violin. So now you hear everything moving around with it. Let's try pitching this transpose down. So now that I've signed the, the actual pitch of this instrument to be um, sidechain to MIDI, instead of a tune, fixed frequency, I have a transpose. All right. So that's giving me more of a, uh, of a texture. I can adjust the material. So it kind of matches up with the timbre of my audio. Maybe I want to turn off the off decay in this instance. So I want to have a little bit of carryover. One thing that is kind of a downfall of Corpus is there's no uh, no amp envelope in here. So if I wanted to sidechain it to MIDI, it just kind of snaps there. So what I do to kind of counteract that is I put an auto filter on here and put a little envelope on here. Quick, quick attack and quick release just to kind of snap out those initial hits. <laughs> So this is with no, no corpus. Maybe I want to reverb that out just a little bit, smear those frequencies. You can also go in here and pitch all this down just a little bit. that works a little bit more so we have the reverb on there everything's tuning around now I can try layering this with my viola maybe turn it down just a little bit Thank you. 
So it can give you a really cool sound. Um, but of course, fine tune to the taste. And then keep on trying out the different physical models in here to uh, really dial in your sound. If something is a little bit low, more low and resonant, um, change around the pitch of the MIDI or your transpose here to kind of match uh, the bass tone of this drone in here. So that's just one way of gaining a little bit more control over this drone and adding a little bit more texture and timbre to it and not making it so atonal. Another way is to put it into a sampler. So I can just take all this audio here, option drag it into this MIDI track. Now I can play it on my key scale. This is the best when you're trying to make it into its own instrument. Um, whenever I want to create just a, a timbre or soundscape in the back where everything's evolving and morphing and I'm just creating like a very uh, smeared texture, I go corpus with audio. But when I'm trying to create another instrument and create another voice in this timbre that's going to really stand out, then I'll put it into a sampler and pitch it around. So we can drag all this MIDI into here. So this is way too low for the sampler. And it's just creating low rumble right now. So I really like that, you know, now I can resample into a sampler here from Metaphysical Function and create another texture. So I'm just like taking this one drone and expanding it to a bunch of different voices, creating a lot of different timbres. So now I can combine these two. Maybe add some kind of delay to this guy. And then even put an arpeggiator on the MIDI track. Maybe see how that sounds. So that's a pretty interesting timbre. And that's by putting an arpeggiator on the MIDI track that I'm sidechaining this drone to. All right, so that kind of covers all the bases of where I would start with sculpting my drones and then putting them into my tracks. So if I was working on one of my tracks right now, I would just be throwing uh, some MIDI from one of my other instruments and seeing which timbre kind of needs that layer under it. <laughs>
All right, so this has been a, another tips and tricks tutorial from Paramind. Um, check out the free sample pack. I'm going to throw in drones like the one I recorded here and a bunch of other drones that I'm going to create with uh, Metaphysical Function and have already created. I'm just going to throw them in there um, and just give them to you as ammunition, uh, things you can start out with and try with the video and see what you can get out of them. Um, and if you don't have Reactor, then I would suggest investing into Reactor. Um, but if you don't, then you have the samples that I made from Metaphysical Function. Thank you. very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do and especially in electronic music. Since, since coming to Pyramind I, I've discovered electronic music and you know San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like, the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.